give me an S, give me a D, give me an M. What is it? SDM. Okay, what is it? <laughs> the Security Device Manager is a GUI tool, graphical user interface tool, that Cisco developed many, many, many years ago. So because it's still in the CCNA curriculum, we wanted to give you a demo a walkthrough of using it. The, the important thing for you to realize is that a GUI tool, whether it's Cisco Configuration Professional or SDM or something else with the graphical user interface, they're all just front ends to giving the Cisco router or switch the commands it needs to function. So I want you to focus as we go through this on the actual underlying commands, which I'll show you, that SDM creates to implement things like bringing an interface up or implementing DHCP. Let's get started. We're going to use this topology for SDM. I've got a PC right here. It's connected to a broadcast domain right here with R1's FA1 slash zero interface. And then R1 has FA1 slash one with connectivity over to the right to R2. So we'll work our way left to right and we'll configure SDM. Now, SDM is just an application, a program that runs on your PC that lets you graphically manage the router. It's pretty handy, pretty fun, but we have to do a few things to make it work. On R1, this interface has to be up, this interface has to have an IP address, and we also have to enable HTTP, because that's the language of love we use between SDM and the router itself. So let's do that on the router. Let's do a show IP interface brief, just to verify what IP addresses we have. So this interface right here, FA1 slash zero, has the IP address 10.0.0.1. The PC has 10.0.0.2. And I just want to make sure we can ping the PC from here. And we can. That's fantastic. Now, to enable the HTTP server function on the router, you simply say IP HTTP server. And that's it. Now your, your router is willing to accept HTTP conversations running at layer four, TCP, and the upper layer, pro upper layer protocol is HTTP. We can also enable HTTP secure server. So if we delete that word right there and say secure server, now it'll support HTTPS as well as HTTP. So fantastic, now it'll support both. And one other thing we need to do as well is this, IP HTTP authentication local. Now what this is saying is, that when somebody does try to connect to this router via HTTP, they won't be connecting on the VTY lines. That's for command line interface connectivity. But when they connect via HTTP, we want to prompt them for a username and a password. And that's what this local command says. We want to use the local database on the running config of this router to challenge a user, ask them who they are and what their password is before we give them access. So let's go ahead and create a user. Let's create username of admin. And I'm going to say privilege level of 15. Now, what privilege level 15 really is, that's privilege mode. When we type in enable, press enter, it's actually prompting us for the privilege level 15 password to get in. Using a privilege, a user with privilege level 15, and we also should specify a secret, the password he'll use. So we'll say secret Cisco. By specifying that, then when we authenticate, we're already going to be King Kong, which is privilege level 15, and that'll satisfy the needs of SDM. So once that's done, we'll save our configuration with copy running config to startup config, and then we'll bring in the PC. So let me bring in the PC. This is a virtualized Windows XP box that's connected to that router. And I'm going to bring it full screen so that we can get a better view of exactly what's going on. So there's a, a more full screen view. And here's SDM, the Security Device Manager. I'll double click on it. We'll say we want to connect to 10.0.0.1. And it does require, by the way, a really old version of Java so that SDM even works. But um, if you do enough research, if you go to Cisco Learning Network, you can actually dig out the exact versions of Java needed to make this work if you want to do it yourself. So I'm going to click on Launch, and it's going to connect out to that router. I'm logging in as admin. I've already tested this once. The password is Cisco, and I clicked on Remember Password earlier. That's why it's there. Click on OK, and it's going to bring up some windows, and it's saying, do you want to trust this content? Yes, absolutely. Yes, go ahead and run it. 
some Java warnings about security. And now I'm running SDM. That's what this is right here. The Cisco Router and Security Device Manager. So it's talking to the router and loading in all the details about that router and its interfaces. So if we click on configure, here's an overview, but if we click on configure, this gives us an opportunity to configure the other interfaces and the other details on this router. So with Security Device Manager, there's lots of bells and whistles that we can play with. We can modify the interfaces or look at them. So under interfaces and connections, showing us that FA1 slash zero has the IP address of 10.0.0.1. If we wanted to modify that, we could simply go into create connection, say we wanna modify or create a new ethernet connection, click on the button, click on next, and let's say we're gonna configure it for straight routing, and let's give it the IP address of 10.12.0.1, and I'll, I'll, I'll put my numlocks on for that, 10.12.0.1 with a mask, and check this out, we can actually specify how many bits for the mask right here. So it's 24 bits, and click on next. And then it's asking, do you want to go ahead and configure DHCP? Well, if we said yes to this, it would automatically create a DHCP server out of R1. I'm going to say no. We'll walk through that manually in just a moment. Click on next. And here's a summary of what it's going to do. And then if we click on finish, because we asked it to, it's going to show us a preview of the commands it's going to put in. From configuration mode, it's going to go to interface FA1 slash 1. It's going to put a description on it. It's going to give it an IP address, and then it's going to exit from the config. So we'll go ahead and deliver that. And now that it's pushed out, that's the IP address now that's on FA1 slash 1. So pretty convenient, pretty handy. So let's go down to additional tasks, and let's walk through DHCP and setting up a server. And the cool thing is that we can click on a few things. It'll create the config, and we can talk about what the config does. So the first thing in DHCP is to create a pool. That's an IP, a pool of IP addresses to hand out. And you simply go to DHCP, DHCP pools, click on add, and we'll call this our dash pool. Just like that, it's just a name. And the network that we're gonna hand it out for is the 10.12.0.0 with a mask of 255.255.255.0. So we're just creating a pool of addresses and it's asking about the starting IP address and the ending IP address. Well, we could actually start at 10.12.0.2. Why? Because our address of .1 is already in use, and we could go all the way up to the end of the range of 10.12.0.254, which is the last valid address on that 24-bit network. We can specify how long the lease is good for. Maybe we want the lease to be good for zero days, and for six hours, let me go back to that real quick. So six hours and 30 minutes. So we're controlling how long the lease is good for. We can hand out DNS servers, 10.12. We'll say we'll be a DNS server. Sure, why not? Win servers. We can hand out domain names. And then once we've done that, we click OK. And here is the commands it's going to push out. It's going to create a pool called our pool. It's specifying this network of 10.12.0.0. The DNS server we're going to hand out, the import all, which is a default. Let's go back. Well, I can't go back. The import all is if I'm a DHCP client, I will hand off my DNS information I got from my, DNA, my DHCP server. And here's our lease. Lease 1630. Did I say one day? Let's cancel that. Let's go back and fix it. <laughs> so our pool do my pool. And the network is 10.12.0.0. And the starting IP address is 10.12.0.2, 10.12.0.254. That'll work. And I did. I left the one day there. So if we want to say zero days and then six hours and 30 minutes, we could. It's right there. And then we could hand out the DNS server information. And anything else we wanted to push out. This right there is that checkbox that I, I should have taken off. So now once we click OK here, now it's specifying the DNS server information, the pool. And check this out. It's also excluding 
the address of 10.12.0.1. Why? Because we said start at 2. So if I said start at 20, it would exclude everything from 1 through 19. So if we push this out, we'll deliver it. We are now a DHCP server. My friends, these are the commands to set up DHCP. It's done. So how do we test something like this? Well, let's first of all go in and say, do we have any clients yet? Um, no, we don't have anybody. We don't have any clients that have gotten IP addresses from us yet. So let's minimize our Windows box for a moment here. And let's go over to the command line. And let's take a look at R1's config. We just, we just configured it. So we do a show run. I'm not yelling. I just hit the caps lock by mistake. So there's show run. And if you'll notice, here's our DHCP pool we created. And here's the exclude statement. And all we need is a client. So we're enabled for DHCP. Let's tell R2 to become a DHCP client. Another really cool feature that exists on Cisco is a feature called debug. We can do a debug IP DHCP server packet, and it will show us any DHCP server related packets that are going on. We'll make a road trip over to R2, and on R2 we'll bring this interface up. We'll do a show IP interface brief. And it's not up, so we'll do a config T and interface FA1 slash zero a no shutdown to bring this interface up. And then we'll say for an IP address, we want you to use DHCP, which says I'll be a DHCP client. So what's happening, there's a DHCP discover that should be being made by R2. The R1 should see that discover and make an offer. The client should request it. And then R1 should send an acknowledgement. There it is right there. So it says the Interface FA1 slash zero was assigned a DHCP address of 10.12.02 with this mask. Um, and we do a show IP DHCP interface, which doesn't exist. In IPv6, you can actually do a show IP, D, IPv6 DHCP client. That's okay. So if we go back to R1, and here's the play-by-play. -play. He saw the discover that came in from R2. He made the offer. R2 made the request for it, and then we sent the acknowledgement. So that's the four packets involved in DHCP. So here in the graphical user interface again, we can see the details that we've configured, the pool range, the DNS servers we're handing out, the time of the lease. And one other option up here is the save button. So if we wanted to save our configuration, this would basically send out a copy run start command out to the router so that we would have this information inside our config next time the router rebooted. So we'll say yes, and it's simply doing in the background a copy running config to start with config. And that's really it for SDM. There's lots of bells and whistles. You can configure lots of really cool things. But one thing you should be aware of is that the actual literal interface of SDM and how to work with it, not too critical anymore as we move into other products like the Cisco Configuration Professional and also the command line is primarily going to be the tool we're going to use to work with and configure our Cisco devices. So the rest of this lab is all about setting up SSH, which we've done twice on routers and switches, and setting up usernames, which we've done over and over again. So that's going to conclude our SDM demo. I appreciate you joining me in lab 4-8, and I'll see you in the next lab.